Now, unless you've been hiding under a rock, you'll know by now that Burger Madness has reached its zenith in Malaysia. And it's gourmet burgers that are hitting the spot these days. Unwittingly or otherwise, it's the guys from My Burger Lab that set this whole thing in motion. I'm here with Renyi from My Burger Lab. How do you feel, I mean, being at the forefront of this crazy movement? I, did you guys expect this to happen when you first started? Well, obviously not. Uh, it is totally unexpected. When we first started, we just wanted to have something that we were happy with, uh, serving you know probably 150 burgers a day uh, from lunch to dinner. But uh, when we first sold out on day one for dinner only, uh, we knew we were kind of onto something and we, we weren't prepared for it, definitely. How many burgers are you doing per day now? I mean, just as an example of the madness for burgers that people um, have. Well, given the five hours service that we have, uh, we serve about 500 to 600 burgers. That's maybe. still a lot of burgers for a little suburban a little, store. Yes. I mean, you guys were, what, a couple of engineers and uh, a and business, business rep. Yeah. How did you get the burgers? Uh, well, the idea was to open up our own cafe, to own our own business. The idea didn't start off as a burger joint to begin with. Um, but what happened was we realized that there were a lot of people who wanted to open up cafes. So we thought, you know, why not do gourmet burgers? Because at that time, Burger Baka was doing really well. And we thought, you know, we could do this uh, based on the experience that we gained while we were in the States. We saw in and out Shake Shack, this kind of uh, cook to order fast food joints. And we said, we can do that here. No one's doing this. Yeah. And then what is it about your burgers that makes it so special? Uh, I think because of how we started. The word lab exists because of how we started experimenting with um, food in general because we are not from a culinary background. So we did a lot of experimentation with flavors, with uh, recipes and whatnot. Yeah. And because of that, uh, we did our homework and we made sure that from ground up, the very basic cheeseburger uh, tasted amazing on its own. Yeah. And that's when we built on flavors from there. And you're confident that you know, no matter how many burger eateries open out there, you, you're con going to continue having the loyal patronage of your yeah. customers? Yeah, well, we, we made sure that, you know, what we did uh, with our burgers, it was labor intensive. That if anyone is to copy us, they have to put a lot of work into it. Yeah. It's not just something you can just, you know, look on a... Stick to the photocopy yeah. machine and just yeah, produce. Yeah, it doesn't work yeah. that way. Yeah. Okay, Mike. So you've been in F&B, like you said, for the last decade and a half. And yeah. Was it difficult, you know, building popularity when you first started? Yep. The first seven months was tough. Yeah. But after that, it's gone pretty well. Now tell us about your product. It's genuine American charbroiled burgers, yep. right? All American. How did you work out that recipe? How did you get there? Well, I had to throw out 10 recipes to get uh, my recipe right, finally. And I had a food testing session done among close uh, friends. And then I test it out uh, with the uh, market, uh, where I basically give out free burger for about a week. So it's all homemade, it's all chemical free, so you know you're obviously there already. You just, you're basically a gourmet burger, but without the sort of shishi setting. Yeah. I understand you've had a little bit of a setback, yeah. I mean, which is why we're currently here yeah. with laundry behind us. Um, tell us about that. Yeah, I uh, had a setback with the uh, uh, Majlis Perbandaran. Petani Jaya or Bandar Raya, Petani Jaya, sorry. So right now a bit delayed. Okay, so you are getting approval and once you get your approval, we're back on your normal site. Yeah. In section 14, right? Jalan 14, 48. Jalan 14, stroke 48, where you're found every evening. Do you cook every evening? Or every you evening, as a Sunday. In the meantime, you've been updating your, your Facebook fans yeah. so they know that when you can get back out on the street. Yeah. And it's not just that, uh, I'm regularly on uh, event sites. So if, for example, uh, if there's any upcoming events, I would uh, inform my customers. Okay, and cool. uh, if there are any new promotions, like my upcoming promotion, once I reopen, loyalty card and stuff like that. Cool, so yeah. we have a lot to look forward to. Yeah. One last question, why is it called Burger Cello? Okay, uh, since I have uh, knowledge in uh, sauces, I'm I would say a former chef because I knew a lot about sauces and everything. So, I, okay, why not? Why don't make it different? Okay. Um, so, I created two uh, Southwestern sauces and uh, Asian American sauces, and of course, your regular favorite uh, barbecue and black pepper. Okay, and do, yeah. do, do, do Malaysians take very kindly to having their sauce, uh, their burgers doused in sauce? Interestingly, yes. Uh, they love my kung pao sauce, which is the Asian American sauce. Okay. It's not, uh, it's not actually uh, Asian at all. It's uh, uh, American creation. Uh, and the other one is the cheese deep sauce. Oh, and that's one of the <laughs> house favorites. Okay, house well, favorites, sorry. Great, favorite. cool. It all sounds amazing. I think we're gonna have to put you to the test now and show us what your sauces are no made problem. of. Okay, let's go.